So load and store instructions are used to get information from the memory into the register file and to get information from the register file into memory. In high level languages, we use variables to store information and those typically live in memory, not in registers. And so for every uh, register operation or every um, variable operation, you have to bring in data from memory, put it in a register, operate on it, and then put it back in the same place in memory which is a complicated process that takes a lot of time, but our compilers take care of all of that for us. In assembly language, we have to do all of that ourselves. So either we can, dis we can say this register is gonna be our variable, our counter variable for this particular operation, or we can allocate a space in memory for our counter variable and then bring in the data from memory into a register, operate on it, and put the result back into memory. So load is the word we use to bring data from our data memory into a register and store is the word we use to take our data from a register and put it back into data memory. For both of these things, we need an address which tells us where in memory to look up that piece of information. And then we need a register in the register file that we're gonna to use to pass information back and forth. Uh, this is one of the other reasons why we use RT as both a source and destination, because in load and store operations, the, the information can go one way or the other way. Load comes into the register file, store goes out of the register file, but for simplicity and consistency, RT is always the data register in load and store operations. That means that RT is the source for a store operation, and it's the destination for a load operation. So, that's how we get information at the register file. In the memory file, in the, in the memory location, we have to figure out where in memory we're going to be interacting with. Uh, this is called an address, and in order to be flexible, MIPS uses a uh, type of addressing called base plus offset. This means that the register file contains an address, and the immediate field contains an offset from that address. And so you can choose to access data at, a, at an address specified in a register, or you can act, choose to access data by some small number above or below that address in memory. And as we'll see when we use this more often, this gives us an opportunity to access variables that are some um, close amount away from a particular value, uh, gives us an easy way to walk through arrays. Um, there's a lot of good reasons to say, I wanna access variable at this, or a, a piece of information at this address plus two, or this address minus four. So that's what we can do with base plus offset. The immediate value is the offset and the base is in a register. And this is why immediate or this is why load and store operations are all I format because the base is specified by a register file, but the I, the immediate value is used as an offset from that base. So let's look at how that works. The base is stored in RS, the offset is stored in the immediate value, and the effective address is just the sum of those two. And so this is what an instruction in assembly code looks like. LW means load word, and there's a whole bunch of these. We can load word, we can load half word, we can load byte, and we can store word, store half word, and store byte. And we can also load upper immediate, which is when you, uh, when you look at the first bit of, bit of code that you write in the lab, you'll see why load upper immediate gets used a lot. Um, but these are the load and store operations that are available in MIPS. Uh, but for the most part, we're going to use uh, load. Oops, <laughs> there we go. Uh, for the most part, we're going to use load word and store word because that brings an entire 32-bit number from memory into the register. And so, load word into register T0, the result uh, that is, or the the value in memory that's at register S3 plus 40. So then, this is the specification. We say T0 gets the value in memory at the address specified by S3 plus 40. And so that's what we do. That 40 is the immediate value, that S3 is the register, and this is the way that it looks in the I format. Again, the opcode specifies whether we're loading or storing or whatever else we're doing. The base register is in RS, the data register is in RT, so that's for loads or for stores, and then the operand is the offset relative to the base. Uh, right, okay, so we talked about all this stuff already, so let's look at the CPU and see how that operation proceeds. So again, just like everything else, the program counter addresses the instruction memory is the first step. It's always the first step because until we've done that, we don't know what instruction we're executing. Then the instruction memory uh, loads up the instruction and just like any other I format instruction, 
RS addresses the register file, RT is used as the destination register D, and then the immediate value is presented to the ALU. And then RS is looked up in the, in the register file and presented to the ALU. Those two numbers are added together, and the result is the effective address. That result is presented to the data memory. Now here, the load and the store operation differ a little bit. I'm showing you load here, and then I'll show you store. So for load, we want to take the value from the data memory and put it into RD, or, or, or RT, right? RT specifies the data register, so RT is going to be the place where we're going to put this result. So we use the address here to uh, address the data memory. We load some word, and that word is presented back to RD and stored in the register file. We load from memory into the register file. The memory address is calculated by the immediate value plus RS. Okay, store word looks very similar. Oh yeah, right, here are the, the, com the control codes, the control point values that give you this operation, that allow this to happen, right? The opcode is load word, we're not branching or jumping, and then destination register is zero. We are writing back to the register file. We choose our register source to be one. We choose our ALU source to be one. We tell our ALU to add. And then we tell our memory to read, whoops, read, and to not write. So that's all it takes. Those are the control points we need to specify load. Then we'll look at store. With store word, it's exactly the same process, right? We address the instruction memory, we find the immediate value, and we find the value of RS, we add those together, and we use those to address memory. But now, instead of storing a value into RT, we're going to load a value from RT. So RT addresses this register here. So S2 is RT. And then RT, the value for RT, is presented to the data memory to be stored there. So you can see in, in both cases, load and store, RT is used as the data register. In one case, it's presented as input. In the other case, it's used as a location for output. But in both cases, then, the only difference is what happens to the data memory. So now we're going to tell the data memory to write instead of to read. And here are the control points, right? The opcode now is store word. And again, the format looks the same, except now T0 is the source of the data rather than the destination of the data. So we're going to put T0 in memory at S3 plus 40. RD is 0 because we have RT going through RD, but we're not really using it because we're not writing to the register file. And then RS is 1, but we're not really using it because we are, um, we're not storing to the register file. ALU source is 1 for the immediate value, add, or ALU function is add, and then again, DR says data memory read, we're not reading, data memory write, we are writing. So that's the operation of the store word instruction. So load and store are immediate format instructions uh, which inter interact with the data memory.